do and let's record also if I, so if Isaac or Enrique want to record please feel free hola 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 okay hello. So hello hello we are now beginning today's event and warm greetings from Adyar to all sisters and brothers that are joining us today from all over the world and India. We are very glad to have your presence here on this special occasion in which we introduce you to great servers of the Theosophical cause, brothers Isaac Howley and Enrique Rake. To start our gathering, I request all of you to put yourselves in a comfortable position and close your eyes so we can repeat together the universal invocation, indicating the unity in diversity and oneness of life, followed by a few moments of silence. But before that, I want to make a few requests to everyone uh, is to keep your microphone muted during the talk. And uh, if you have any question, any query, anything that you want to share with uh, the lecturers and with us, kindly not, the, not your questions down and you can ask them at the end of the talk, whether by raising your hand or write them in the chat box. And we will take them up after the talk. Thank you for your cooperation and now, uh, you feel comfortable and we will begin our meeting with the universal invocation. Oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom. Oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. Oh, hidden love, Embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee know they are therefore one with every other. Well, now is my big pleasure to introduce our today's speakers who are, who are going to share with us the lecture, how to spell the minotaur of the personal labyrinth. This lecture will explore the esoteric significance of the Greek might of the minotaur and how it is related to everyone's spiritual journey. Brother Isaac Howley, is doctor in psychology and a specialist in Jungian psychology. He is an international speaker and has been a visiting professor at numerous universities in Spain and Latin America. He acts also as a private psychotherapist since the late uh, psychotherapist. Sorry. Since the late 70s, he became a member of Theosophical Society. Brother Enrique Rey is a physician with a specialty in psychiatry and a doctorate in psychology. He has collaborated on more than 60 books. He is the author of numerous scientific articles. He is also an international lecturer and also invited teacher in Latin American University. And he is a member of the Theosophical Society. But Brother Enrique and Brother Isaac have been dedicated to spread theosophy and help people around the world using their professional and academic knowledge along with the ancient wisdom of theosophy. They are authors of many books related to psychology, dreams, life after death, among many more. And as we just hear Brother uh, Enrique told us, uh, they have recently published the reunion with our Einar Chris in English, which will be available for in Amazon and during the first month will be free in Kindle. So this is a great opportunity for us to uh, 
approach their their wonderful and very useful for daily life teachings and insights so we thanks we thank them a lot for us Praia CS studio is a real honor to welcome both to share with us about this interesting subject so with no further ado I welcome brothers Enrique and Isaac. Thank you, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Now, thank you. Thanks you. With you. I got to, to put the share the screen. Uh, you can unmute. They are allowed to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Okay, we got to make some small introduction about this mind. Uh, how to expel the minotaur from the personal labyrinth. It is possible for some of uh, people who are uh, share with us in this moment know something about this mind. Uh, in, in general view, uh, the conception of this mind is so deeply in some conception, and especially in the constitution of the human uh, man. We, we, we try to, to uh, share with you, Enrique and I, this view who mix psychological and theosophical conceptions. Enrique. Yes, it's, it's important to have a, a short reflection of what the myths represent. The myths represent the complete reality of human being. There are stories uh, with uh, people with divine qualities are combined with human ones. Uh, appear good gods and humans uh, during the story. And uh, normally is uh, a moral of the story at the end. So it's complete because in our, we know as a theosophist in our inner structure, we combine uh, uh, divine parts with uh, material parts. And the myth normally uh, integrate, integrate it into one story. So this is the myth in general. And, and this is a particular myth. We will explain uh, how, how is, uh, what, in what corresponds with the, the, the minotaur, uh, what corresponds to the threat, the Ariana threats and whatever. Uh, the deep reading of the myths help us to discover the hoping in the free uh, hope Hope the free in the future, in the feeling possibility is, is the possibility to, to be free. Is, this is regarding this, exactly this myth. It's against the helplessness uh, because if we spend our incarnation waiting and waiting and waiting and we don't do anything, uh, it's a terrible decision. That's why the, the myths allow us to see that there is a threat if we if, you, if we prove the, the inner development, we can find the threat and then we can put distance with the minotaur and then we will have a very productive life. So this is a short introduction of what the, 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 the myths are and we will start with this specifically, this myth of the minotaur. Isaac, if you want to start. Yes. Despite the fact that the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur is well known, we want to do a general view, review of this myth. The first part, the preparation to start the obligatory part of every human being. Theseus, the ancient Greek in Greek, the one who know who founds was a mythical king of Athens, son of Itra and Aegeans. Although, according to another tradition, his father was Poseidon, the god of, sea, of the sea, who would have sexually abused Itra in the temple of Athen Athena. The Aegean king who had not had children with his wife, consulted the oracle of Delphi, 
And the answer was, do not open your skin until you return to Athens. He did not understand the oracle, but Pythius, king of Thrace, and Etra's father did. What the oracle had means was that if he arrived in Athens without having had any sexual intercourse, the first woman he lay with would have an hair of his. As Pythius wanted his daughter to give birth to, the, to her of the Athenian throne, he made a drink and thus got Etra pregnant. After the conception of Theseus, Aegeus, fearing the Palantides, his nephews, who wanted the throne, decided that his son should not spend his ch childhood with him and hid his sword and sandals under a rock that the child should not be able to move until he was strong enough. When he was 16 years old, his mother revealed the secret of his fatherhood. And at this age, Theseus was able to lift the stone, put on his sandals and sheathed his father's sword and begin his journey, journey to Athens to be recognized as the king of sun. This part is the first uh, that we know about the might. Theseus, assigned to have semi-divine bird, which determines the birth of the hero, or an already mature ego that, they, that by evolution and karma has reached the point of fulfilling his destiny. This is the preparation of Theseus and, and this state to exchange, exchange and himself and discover his destiny. The rock, the sandals, and the swords are symbols of uh, his structure and energy, which will sustain his destiny. The sandals are the path that he will follow and this word, the strength of the, his principles to defeat his inner enemies. Enrique. Well, well this is the first part of the myth. Uh, there are many morals of the story here. Uh, I think the, the most important is the destiny for the king's destiny. Um, normally, the, the destiny speaks, speaks us at least three times. When something is, is possible or something is not possible, the destiny shows us that if it's possible, something to, some, some journey, some, some door, some option, possibility to, to follow. But uh, when the destiny don't want, we do something, the destiny shows us uh, problems and problems and problems at least three times. So the king wanted to, to have a descendants and uh, the destiny say that he, he, he can have uh, a, a kids. And then he have two options. Uh, one option is accept the destiny designations or the second one is to don't accept the, des the destiny uh, situation. And if you don't accept the destiny, then you try to find uh, different ways in order to uh, get what is forbidden for you. And this is probably the first part of the myth. Uh, people fighting against, against the, the, the destiny. And the second problem is uh, uh, regarding to the karma because uh, the karma is not a single action. Karma is dynamics. 
So when he tried to do what is forbidden for him, he will uh, start uh, a sequence, a, a very great sequence of, of problems. And during that problem, the, the karma will involve all those problems as a result of the problem, the first problem to, to, to avoid the, the, the signs of the, the road. <clears throat> and the last part, uh, the Isaac uh, was explaining the, the sandals and, and, and some other symbols is because, is because the, in the midst it's important to see, uh, uh, to try to see the, the symbols, the icons, uh, to interpret, to do some interpretation because the, this is a, a story for the physical world, but obviously uh, many of the signs are belonging to the metaphysical aspects. That's why the sandals in the physical world are, are only a shoes, but in the metaphysical uh, world means uh, the possibility to walk, the possibility to, to necessity in the destiny to walk and to, and to go and to move, move yourself from you. When you are, uh, when you are, uh, in order to get a, a goal uh, which is not clear in this part of the myth. So this, this is what I can say uh, in, until this part. Isaac. Yes, we go to the second part. The road test to exchange personality. This is interesting. This myth have four parts. Uh, the first part that the hero uh, destiny are the destiny of all the human beings, if we want to see it in this uh, in, in this view, and we go to to go more deeply in this part. Theseus, who from a very young age had stood out of his strength and courage, decided to go to Athens along with to meet his father without fearing the dangers of the trip cool and tail. The first to experience his courage was Pheripetus, Pheripetus, son of Hephaestus, the highway bandit, who in spite of be being lame, perfectly mastered an enormous bronze, bronze maze with which he killed the travelers. The same maze will be so useful for Theseus in the future, since he kept it for himself after giving him that. This is the first of four experienced of Theseus. Another bandit, there are four bandits. He had to face was Sinus, the pine wander who had a peculiar way of getting right of his enemies. He went, he went two nearby pine trees, tied the trees tops together and an arm of his victims to each of them. The third, then he had to face Siron, son of Pelops and the descendant of Tantalus, who forced the travelers to wash his feet in the sea. Then he threw them into the sea where a turtle into the service of Hades devoured them. Theseus refused and taken him by defeat and he threw into the sea. This is uh, the third, the fourth, the last. Not far from there lived Procustes. This is more, more know, know about this uh, bandit. A handsome bandit who had an habit to take in passengers by to deform them. He first seduced them, tied them to the bed and gagged. it. Then he began an atrocious torture. This second part, can be understand, understood from a theosophical perspective as follows. Theseus begins his journey to Athens and on the way he meets the following assaults, or in some way 
aspect of his personality. This is a point that I insist. His aspect of the, his personal, personal structure that require transforming them and this state on his life. This is uh, a view of the constitution of the human, the personality. The manasa, the kama rupa and manas of the personality. Uh, the first one, peripetes, represent the violent and the destructive behavior. The second one, sinus, the slander, and the falsehood uh, that case insecurity and loss of confidence in others. Siren motivate for emotions made others believe in his good intentions and eventually they lost their trust. And the last, Procostes, with his beauty attracted an ultimate harmed woman. This uh, conception, of, uh, but we, we, if it's possible to say, part of the constitution of Theseus represent part of the constitution of this hero and Arinos. This is the part, the second part, we need to purify and to uh, expel, if we say this, these uh, bandits that are in our constitution. Enrique. Yes, uh, it, uh, we can see these as uh, obstacles, but uh, we know the karma of every, everybody's karma is different for for every person. Um, I like to do schemas. So I think in, in some occasions the, the karma say no. And in that case is forbidden. It's forbidden to do anything. In some other case is problematic, but possible. And it could be very problematic, middle problematic or, or little problematic, but it's possible. You need to show efforts and, and see the problem as a challenge. And the third problem or the third path is when is everything is easy. So Theseus want to go alone, wanted to go alone to Athens. And then he will confront with the, the obstacles. And obviously the obstacles are uh, not uh, forbidden, are problematic, but possible. And he find in, inside the intelligence and effort to, to solve the challenges and then he can reach the, the at Athens to see what he wanted to see. So, but it's impossible, to, it's, it's possible to, to, to try to interpret, to do some interpretation about how the, the how, how is functioning the, the metaphysical part of the myth, uh, showing us uh, what is possible but difficult and showing us what is impossible or not allowed or not, what is forbidden. And what happens if we try insist in the forbidden paths? Well, this is part of the, 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 king's, the king's problem. And what happens when you have uh, uh, obstacles uh, but uh, the, uh, problematic, but uh, with possibilities in the case of the sales and, and the myths show us how it's possible for the sales here solving the problems and, and reach the path he, he wanted to reach the, in that case to, to reach Athens. I think it's the, the, the important part and Isaac told uh, the rest of the parts of the, 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 the importance of the obstacles and the and we are uh, speaking uh, of uh, people with a lot of qualities because the obstacles are, as we can see, uh, very complicated. So the obstacles are not simple, are dangerous and, and, and quite complicated and full of experience to kill, to kill the people who, who try to walk in the forbidden paths. That's it, uh, Isaac, if you want to continue. The third part. Arrival in Athens and confrontation with his feminine part and mental discipline. Theseus continued his journey and arrived in Athens. 
but he encountered a problem. His father had married with Medea, who had been Jason's wife. From his union, a son had been born from they had named Medo. This is the, the third problem that the Theseus need to confront. But Medea, who, has, who was a sorceress, recognized him and saw him I saw in him a danger for her son to access the throne of Athens. So the, the, she made a plan. The young man had come to the palace incognito. The king then prepared to get right of him by ordering to him to fight against the, the marathon bull. But the bull was defeated, and Theseus was invited to a banquet into the palace to celebrate the victory. Once there, Aegeus put poison that Medea had given him in the boy's cup, but change saved his life. Here, Theseus uh, have another, another experience another uh, confrontations. Medea represents many things, but this is the op op opposite of Ariadna that we will later to speak about here. Theseus was officially recognized as the son and successor of the king, prompted to the rebellion of the sons of Palante, Aegean's brother, the Palantites. Theseus fought in his military conning, management decorned his adversaries and killed most of them, and the rest fled. The third part marked the final preparation from the man who faced his destiny and fulfillment, bringing balance to his nature. When Theseus arrived in Athens, or on this state in his life, he has to resolve the negative feminine aspects of him, Medea. Remember, if we go deeply to the uh, Jung, uh, philosophy, Jung conception about the structure of the man, we have, we have different kind of uh, we have, uh, aspects in our constitution. One of them, we are uh, equiv equivalent of, of the light and dark. And Medea represent the dark aspect of the feminine. And he need to confront before uh, go to the uh, light aspect of the feminine. The bull's test of the marathon or his fight with dark sensuality but he defeats it. Now in his last trial, he purifies his mind on the ambitious deceits represented by the Palantites. And finally, he is ready to the, to, for the great test, the most important test. Now he got to confront Enrique. Yes, uh, what Isaac is talking about is uh, there are inner structure, something is happening in the inner structure of the, uh, of the myth, and something is happening outside. Uh, in the internal structure of every human being, as we know as a theosophist, uh, there is an Ariadna thread, and uh, obviously uh, the possibility of exit of the labyrinth, with, which uh, represent the Kama and the influence of the Minotaur, and animalize him, and also how to develop the hope to exit of that condition. Uh, we are talking about the inner structure. So in the inner structure, obviously we have a monster inside, a Minotaur inside, and this is uh, this feed, this this monster associated with our karma is uh, normally is feeding is feeding our karma, and our karma is a second monster, second second monster inside us, 
And now uh, the cells need to fight very brave against all of those obstacles to reach what he deserved because he, he's the, he deserved the, the, to become in a, in a king. That's why the, 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 the heritage of him is, is important in the myth. And uh, the myth is, is telling us that uh, we can be patient or superficial, uh, re ref refusing what we need to do in this incarnation. He need to fight because there are many problems. Uh, he need to fight in this condition of him, in, in this uh, incarnation to get to reach the throne. Um, it's interesting because for many of us, uh, the life is not easy. It's, uh, it's full of complications and we can uh, be confused and, and and, and many of us normally think, well, we, we, don't, uh, we don't want to, to, to feed my karma. And I will try to let the burglars and the bandits to do whatever they want to do because I'm very good. I, 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 and because I'm very good, I, I want to fight against them. And this is a very problem because we are feeding the, the other's karma and indirectly, I mean, uh, we, indirectly we are feeding our uh, inner karma. So we can find a lot of messages inside uh, this part of the myth because the Zeus is now in the middle of the, the problem to put order in all the things that his father is doing in, with, yeah. with, with, the, with the equilibrium in, in, in this part of the outside or, or inside the personage. Isaac? Yes. The fourth part, the final part of the myth. Athens had to send a tribute to the King Minos of Crete that consisted of the sacrifice of seven maidens and seven young men who would be devoted ordered by the monster Minotaur. And that was a condition imposed after the military expedition of Minos against Athens to avenge the death of Androgeo. Upon arriving in Crete, Princess Ariadne fell in love with him and proposed to Theseus to help him defeat her brother the Minotaur, in exchange for taking her back to Athens with him and make her, and make her his wife. Theseus accepted. He is a point that we later we uh, make some comments. Ariadne's help consists in giving Theseus a ball of trade that he tied by one end to the door of the labyrinth. Thus, Theseus entered the labyrinth until he met the Minotaur, whom he put to death with his feet. He then he packed up the tree, and thus he was able to ex exit the labyrinth and immediately accompanied it by the rest of the Athen Athenians and by Ariadna he embarked back to Athens. When perceiving the gallery from the port of Piraeus in Athens, the Aegean king saw the black sails, since the sails had forgotten to change from the white sails, and believing that his son has died, committing suicide by throwing himself into the sea, which from then on received the name of the Aegean Sea. Here, the final part of the myth, summarize the reason for our preparation during our life to confront the deep shadow, the Minotaur. The Zeus has been sacrificed, the, poten the potential of him represented by the sacrifice of the young people that is, they are the border by the minotaur of the shadow. Normally, this part, the young people represent 
some aspects, potential aspects that are not development for this uh, uh, shadow that uh, they destroy these parts. We find ourselves in a dilemma, entering to the labyrinth of our un unconsciousness in search of the minotaur without the knowing how to get out of it. This is one of the uh, produce of many people to know who are who are um, well, the people don't like to go uh, deeply inside, inside. They prefer to live in outside, in the superficial aspects. Here Ariadna represents the soul that helps us when we have prepared and purified ourselves during our development. She has a treat that helps us get out of the labyrinth, out of confusion and ways of life. This is no, we know some about this. Many times when, when we are prepared and we have the, the purification of our life, the soul give, give to us a help and prepare to, to, to us a way to resolve the problems. Finally, the cells meet the shadow of the minotaur, <clears throat> an aspect of the human being, half animal, half human. This aspect may represent the Kama Rupa or animalized body of desires. Here, uh, Jung, in the psychological conceptions, uh, declare any person who like to go to the, uh, his own uh, develop, to, to his own realization, need first after all, to go to the confront the shadow, the minotaur. I uh, finally say, only descending into the into hell can be ascend to the light. This declaration of the uh, Dante in the in his uh, uh, divine uh, uh, novel. Oh, I don't remember exactly the name. But he said, and I repeat, only by descending into hell can we ascend to the light. Enrique. Yes, there are many interesting things in this part of the myth. Uh, one is the negotiation. The negotiation is very common in our lives and in the, in, in the, in the contents of this myth. And one of the important negotiation is with Ariadna. Ariadna is falling, falling in love with uh, the Zeus. And she offered the possibility to find the, the possibility to get out from the labyrinth uh, in exchange to, to be with his, with uh, the Zeus forever. It, it means to, to be, to be married. And the sales says yes. How many times in our lives we uh, don't know our inner force and we offer or we promise to do things that we can complete. And <clears throat> this part of the human nature is explained in this myth because the sales says yes. And when everything is changing because he's outside, he killed the, the, the Minotaur. And now he's thinking uh, if, if he should pay or not pay his promise. This is a very, very interesting and very important part. Isaac mentioned that the Minotaur is a combination of Kama and, and Kama Manas, Kama, the, the, the lowest part, the, the, the desires part of the instincts and also the, the, the lower mind. But uh, uh, in this uh, situation, the minotaur also is uh, trapped in, in the center of the, of the labyrinth. Uh, the Zeus is going to fight against him. And this is an interesting part because in the, in, the, in, the, in the physical plane, in the physical world, it's impossible that the, that the Zeus which is, uh, uh, is not a monster, can 
uh, kill the monster, but in the metaphysical world is completely possible. So even only if the people is attracted to know himself and the, and the metaphysical part, he can find the possibilities to, to fight and, and to solve problems which appear impossible for the physical, for the physical part of the human being. So this is another message of the uh, beautiful message of, uh, about this myth. And in the last part uh, <clears throat> about the, the black cells, um, uh, uh, this, uh, this mistake of uh, the, the, the sailors who uh, forget to, to change the sails. Uh, it's interesting to, to, to think why he forget because this is happening in the physical part of the story, or is some hand from metaphysical who, who produce that the sailors forget to change the sails. And this allowed to happen the, the final part of the myth. It, 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 the final part of the myth is uh, the, the problem uh, who will cause the, the, the forget to change the sails. So, if we can see, we can, we can find a lot of messages inside one, one myth. And the invitation from Isaac and me is to put uh, in, in a piece of paper, the physical part and the metaphysical part. And with the, all the, the theosophical knowledge, which is a lot, we can find the different messages and how those messages are combining in different parts of the myth. <clears throat> because if we do, if we do that, we, we will have a, a very beautiful experience of learning, of learning our metaphysical part and the, and the physical part, because we will project ourselves with the contents of the story, because in, in, in some sense, we are part of the, all of the stories of the myths. Isaac. Yeah, I have the idea now when you explained about the seals. Uh, the black seals, it's not a surprise, it's a symbol. Why uh, Aegeus committed suicide? Aegeus represents the old part of the structure, like the myth of the Osiris and Horus in Egypt. The father need to die for give to uh, opportunity to the son, the new king. The Zeus is the new king. He uh, uh, have the experience with the Minotaur and he destroyed the Minotaur. Now is he have all the energy who in use for, uh, we say, who go uh, in the, his own uh, weight, king of Athens, the and father. He deserved to be the king, yes. He deserved yes. to, to be the king. The father uh, as the part, the old part, and now is. Uh, Finish. Not he don't need to stay more in these conceptions. It is possible to explain in this part. Yeah. Last, it's possible because uh, uh, the the divine part think how can we uh, well not not exactly kill but uh, get outside of the myth the the king. Well, with the surprise of the sales. And then he commits suicide, and then you are have uh, the, the the way to to reach the throne without obstacles. Mm -hmm. Probably is not the most beautiful solution of the situation, but the, but at, at least is the the it's a solution. It's a solution which implies the uh, all the mistakes committed by the king. Uh, so it's a a, a a little bit of karma inside yeah. the decision of the heaven yeah. and and also the what is needs uh, what is need to to get a throne vacant to the sales can uh, take it without problems is is what you are what you, what you are mentioning in this part of the myth it's a beautiful myth and and we invite you to to check and think and, and use your metaphysical uh, mind in, in order to, to see more, more details. Uh, if we function in a in group, we can find many, 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 many messages. And some of those messages are, are, are more 
specific for uh, everyone. Some of the messages are uh, more important for one or for other or whatever, but this, this is full of messages. It's beautiful to, to see the myths. I the seals rep yes, the seals represent the hero, the higher ego, facing of psychical state of the evil dominance, the minotaur, half human, half bull, that feeds of young people who were sacrificed. The labyrinth is the deep unconsciousness, complex because of the resources it contains. It is the eternal world of each person in the dark, deep, denied, feared areas. There are not higher parts. Enrique. Yes, uh, every human being has uh, his own labyrinth. Some labyrinths are dark, uh, some others are very, very dark, but the labyrinth is, is, is the place where it's easy to, to be lost. And we build our labyrinths with karma, with our decisions in past incarnations. We <clears throat> actually birth in, in this new world. We are babies, but when we, we are young, uh, we find that the, the, the energy put us inside a labyrinth. We, and this is not extreme labyrinth. This is labyrinth we made with it during the different incarnations. And um, the problem now is <clears throat> how to minimize the problem of our labor, la, labyrinth, or even if we can find the way out to this labyrinth in only one incarnation. In this myth, it's in only one incarnation because we are talking about one hero. But in the in the normal life, probably uh, you, you can see this image. This the of labyrinth probably uh, a good way is to advance in the in defining the, the 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 entrance and it's interesting because in the theosophical in the theosophical knowledge uh, they they normally insist that if, if we develop if we if we practice the inner development we will find uh, metaphysical aspects. And one of the metaphysical aspects is the Ariadna thread. Ariadna is the soul of everybody's soul. So when we find the thread, we find the way out of the labyrinth. And it could be in one life, two lives, three lives, it doesn't matter. We, we, when, we want, when we see the, the thread invisible, when we don't have the enough development, we, we are in the correct path. To, to get out of the labyrinth, as, as, as Isaac mentioned, and, and reach the superior mind. Isaac. Yes. Enrique. Well, some learnings about this myth. Uh, there are many, many obstacles created by ourselves. This is uh, very clear uh, during the myth. The Minotaur represents a great obstacle. So in the center of our labyrinth is a great, great monster. Uh, we feed it through bad decisions. When we decide wrongly, we put more power in our beast, in our minotaur. When the minotaur grows a lot, it becomes a monster that will feed our karma. Karma will cause the difficult reincarnations where it will be very difficult to regain the ascending path. Well, this is uh, the things we were talking during the presentation of this myth. The next slide, please, Isaac. Now, uh, a little part of the secret of crime, the HPV. It is true that science is not blamed for this short slightness. Uh, what is talking about the HP Blavatsky in this part? why uh, we commit so many mistakes, why we uh, normally don't accept the, the metaphysical part, why we are in our incarnations in difficult places where it's impossible to develop our uh, spirituality. This, is, this problem is caused obviously for our past decisions and our karma. And uh, now uh, HPV is, is mentioning one of the problems we have in this physical plane. And one of the problems is the sense of science. Our scientists normally uh, 
work very hard in the physical world and try to uh, find the solutions of everything, all the inner problems of the human being in that part of our structure. It means, uh, so they, they want to understand the absolute cosmos only with the physical, uh, the physical plane. That's why uh, Blavatsky is mentioned that the, the science is not blamed for this uh, myopy. And what means myopy? Myopy means that uh, inability to see far. In the myopy, we can see the things very close, but uh, we, are, uh, we have the inability to see far. And far is the metaphysical part, far is the, the superior mind, far is our atma, our buddhi, far is the, the best part of every human in, in his structure, is everything. The best part of the of our, our inner na nature is far, it's, it's not close. The close is only the physical world. So this problem uh, that Lavasky mentioned, that's the myopy of the, of the science, certainly in the deep darkness of prehistoric ages, explorers get lots of labyrinths, <clears throat> whose great corridors lack doors, without allowing them to perceive any way out of archaic past. Secret of Crime, volume three, page 72. Inex inexplicable errors of an intelligent people moving away do the prejudice and conditioning from the true con contained in archaic statements. Um, the second problem of the science is the attitude of science against the archaic statements. Uh, the scientists normally, most of them, see the arch archaic statements as a fables, as a mistaken stories. Uh, and this is a great problem for the theosophists when we try to invite people to our places to open their minds and hearts to uh, check at least the archive statements. They normally use the prejudice, the prejudice associated by the scientists because the scientists normally present us as a uh, people who is very bright and with full of intelligence, but the, the Madame Blavatsky is, told, is talking us. Uh, that this is a, a, a mistake. So science problem, the sh short likeness uh, in the deep darkness, and this is the, the, the labyrinth in the arcade pastor closed. If it's closed, we can find our inner structure and everything we will try to explain everything with our outside structure. It means the, the, the physical world and we commit a terrible mistake. And then Ariadna, we will try to produce us crisis, accidents, problems in order to open our mind and find finally what, what happens inside our inner structure. Isaac? Yeah, I remember now the, the, uh, the sample of the probation, the, prob the probation. exercise of the master, the probation, the exercise of the masters who uh, uh, we say who need from the uh, pupils and the chelas to, to take this um, first step, the probation. If you don't go deeply to the labyrinth of each uh, chela, you don't know any uh, about the, what, what is the truth in this deeply aspect of the labyrinth of the unconsciousness. We, we understand now why, uh, in respect to this view, why the, uh, the probation is necessary for know more about the, the chelas and the students who, who like to go more deeply. Yes, Enrique. Yes, uh, could you pass the next? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, all this image is, the scientist, uh, which is able to see the, the, the short distance in the first clear, uh, clearly visible point of the prehistoric period. Yeah, the, this is uh, more common with the, uh, our scientists try to explain the, our origin, our roots as a human beings. Normally they use uh, uh, things uh, 
which which is uh, hidden uh, uh, below the uh, as an archaeological rest or whatever. But this is not enough because uh, our uh, the story in the doctrine, the secret doctrine mentioned us that this is impossible to find a vestige from the third race, for example, or, or even the, the different parts of the fourth race. So it's impossible. The method, the method is the myopia, the the myopia, because we are trying to extrapole from the this uh, little box all the solutions in the big box, and it's impossible to find the big box only with this. Uh, only with these uh, coordinates. So this is a problem. The problem is how is possible to find, uh, to put information in the eyes of some scientists. I mentioned some scientists because if we remember the, the, the conversations between Krishnamurti and, and, and some physics from, uh, from 50 or 60 years ago, uh, very bright physics, uh, the, those physics were open to listen Krishnamurti and the surprises of the destiny. It, it was interesting because the the the, the wife of the, this uh, famous physic, uh, who was a friend of uh, Krishnamurti, David Boom, the the wife uh, find a book of Krishnamurti. She likes a lot the book. She talked about the book with the. David Boom, David Boom opened his mind and accept to meet Krishnamurti. And then we have a two impressive, a high intelligent brains a, talking together and finding a metaphysical a, truths. And we can find the, the, the conferences or many of the conferences now in YouTube. And we can see how it's possible for David Boom with full of prejudice and uh, very bright uh, physics, try to understand what Krishnamurti is talking about. And Krishnamurti peacefully is explaining and questioning and is a reconduction of the questions in order to, to, uh, in order to allow a, a new vision of the reality. This is beautiful. So it's possible for some of the scientists to uh, have a more clear vision about our metaphysical world. And this is important in the myths because the myths are one of the stories which is possible for everybody to find or to touch a little bit of the metaphysical world. And we deserve in our, in our incarnation at least one, even if we are old or young, uh, at least once to open our minds in order to just to test or to explore or uh, what happened inside me beyond the, the physical brain. What happened? Is, is that true or not? If we contact by faith, we uh, activate some corridors and then we can find uh, answers. And one of the most beautiful part of this, uh, at least uh, the people is uh, at least uh, a little open to this, is the interpretation of the dreams. Um, by the way, we have also a one book in, in, in published in, in Amazon about the, the interpretation of the books. It's also in, in Kindle part, also in paper. But the things here is at least in two or three or four things inside the psychology is possible for the students or for the young people to see that it's possible that some messages from, this, uh, from the, the dreams are connected with some, something, something beyond what is visible for us. Well, this is what he's uh, talking about in this slide. Isaac. The, I don't know if you like this so much, no? I, yes, I go so, more, and, so much text and very little yes. there. Oh, well, this is, uh, ah, okay. Put, put the, the, the other one, the, the slide before. No, 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 the other one. No, the other, the other. Next, next, next. Hey, this, this is the dialogue of two twin babies who are waiting in their mother's womb to the day of their birth. It's beautiful, this, this example. They talk about the 
predicting the, let me check because it's very short. Uh, <clears throat> okay, they talk about the brightening day, but they we debate, debate uh, is the same debate we do about God or eternity. Here is, here is one example of, of what one author do with this. In a mother's womb, there were two babies. One asked to the other, do you believe in life after childbirth? The other replied, of course I do. There has to be something after the delivery. Maybe we are here to prepare to what is come later. So this is more advanced soul. Nonsense, says the first. There is no life after birth. What kind of life would that be? The second says, I don't know, but uh, there will be more light than there is here. Maybe we can walk uh, on our own legs and eat with our mouths. Perhaps we will have other senses, which we cannot understand now because we are in the womb. The first answer, that is absurd. Walking is impossible. And eating with our, your mouth, ridiculous. There's some vertical cord. Uh, this nutrit us and give us everything else we need. The umbilical cord is too short. Life after childbirth is impossible, stupid. The second insist, well, I think there's something and maybe is different from this, uh, from what is here. Maybe we are not longer need to physical tube. The first answer, nonsense. Also, if there really is life after childbirth, then why did not one ever return from there? And this is the beautiful phrase because everybody say that when is uh, uh, trying to confront the possibility of something beyond death. So then why did no one ever return from there? Childbirth is the end of life and in the postpartum, there is nothing beyond darkness, silence and forgetfulness. He won't take us anywhere. Well, I don't know, says the second, but for sure we are going to meet mom and she will take care for us. The first replied, mom, do you really believe in mom? That's ridiculous. If mom exists, there were, uh, then where is she now? The second said, she's around us. Uh, we are surrounded by it from her. We are. It is her that we live without here, this world would be and could not exist. Well, sorry for the, it's very, very little the, 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 the size of the, but, but it's important to, to say that because the, the next, uh, the next, uh, the next slide is uh, have a relation with this. The most developed baby, there is something beyond the childbirth. We will go uh, into a world of light and we will meet our mother. And the, the, this is smiling. The other, they said, the materialistic baby, you don't know, understand. There is nothing beyond childbirth. Understand, do not be gross. This is the inner structure according to the theosophical teachings. And this is uh, one, uh, the students of uh, Madame Blavatsky draw uh, during the last uh, teachings in the Logia Blavatsky in London. And finally, he reached this state. This is the mother, he, he, he was uh, believing in that possibility. Uh, and the other, the other child, I think there is nothing beyond here and find uh, probably a lower karma. And what, what, what? Uh, it's a beautiful explanation of what happened with the accepticism independent of the age. We are talking about people who even didn't burn, uh, didn't get out uh, of the mother. Well, uh, uh, we would like to explain this because it is beautiful, the, the example. The next, please, uh, Isaac. Well, self-knowledge can present labyrinths with doors that communicate where the person wants to go and with closed doors where the inner principles of the human being inhabit. How good just what I have worked for, how well I was born here. And in the lower part is the ignorance does not believe that there, there are some metaphysical parts, therefore does not believe in karma, which will cause dangerous blindness throughout its incarnation. My God, what a disaster. 
where they have sent me to be born in that place. Okay, this is the ignorance and this is the more advanced uh, human. And this is a little bit about karma. Isaac, you want to talk something about the babies? No, it's okay. You are you explain all. Thank you. Well, this is a, the, the little scheme, invisible zone for the, the ignorant. The, only he knows to, uh, himself, <clears throat> and he thinks that he what he's thinking or what he's doing is uh, not watching for every uh, for the rest of the physical plane. Uh, this is a zone of visibility and the physical senses. Uh, this is the first stage. In the second stage, uh, we have inferential zone. Why inferential zone? Because we uh, try to use our rational mind in order to find possibilities for the metaphysical world. And for that so, we need to do uh, some exercises like uh, inferential uh, practices, for example, uh, should be something who allowed us to have instincts, should be some part in our brain who allowed us to have uh, desires, and obviously we have energies, so basically that energy need to come from somewhere and whatever. This is the inference zone. And this is the third stage. This is the, the structure of the, the inner structure of the theosophy. The physical body, the physical plane, and then the astral plane. We, we have here the, 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 the linga sarira and, and the prana and the lower mind. Also, uh, uh, the superior mind, the, the auric egg, buddhi, and atma. Uh, when you find in this knowledge, we can uh, approach this knowledge. But we, when we are like the concrete baby in the invisible zone, we don't see only 20 centimeters or one meter far from our our site. Next, please. And the same happened with the myths. Minotaur is an obstacle to personal development to the necessary evolution. This is Buddhi, Atma, higher mind, evolution cycle, Ahamkara, the thinker, this is the bridge, Ariat Dread or Antakarana, and lower mind, Minotaur, growth of beast, uh, this is a circle, this is an unfortunate circle. Kama, the demons of desire, cyclical destruction of the madness, karma, degradation, growth to animality, growth of the beast, and this is a circle. Weak alliance with the lower mind. Weak alliance because the lower mind uh, think as an animal. Yeah, uh, and, and is in the labyrinth until the Ariadna with the threat uh, put the possibility to Antakarana, he, uh, uh, put the possibility for the lower mind to climb to the higher mind and solve the problem of this Minotaur, which uh, will disappear uh, slowly uh, uh, if the people is uh, paying the, the bills of the karma and also uh, avoid uh, uh, or direct his searching to the Buddhi and Atma. Well, this is uh, what is uh, uh, trying to explain this slide. Next, please, or do you want to, to, to say something, Isaac? Uh, we, 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 uh, we explain enough about this. We continue, please, your... Uh, well, the cycle of evolution is not only for one, one incarnation, it's only the, the story of the human being. Uh, the cosmic children, for example, like the big mean inhabitants, the primary nuclei, the ovules, uh, whatever. Also, all the all the develop the development of one uh, person, which uh, it is inside of the seat. Uh, uh, we have all the instructions to to growth and growth and and, and produce us in 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 different uh, in different stages of uh, maturity. In order to solve the problems, the, the karma and the situation of our incarnation will will put us in, in order to face to face them, to grow or to or to remain in our in our stages. So this is the law of the law and the cycle of evolution in in the in the great explanation, but also in the in, at at level of the human being. The next, please, uh, Isaac. 
Well, this is one visualization. Uh, again, uh, this visualization is for, is for do in your places you are, uh, closing your eyes and follow the instructions. But uh, this is a beautiful explanation to, to confront your metaphysical part and find different things. Uh, this visualization is how to, to be in contact with your, your minotaur and how to, to find the, the way out of this. Uh, it's a lot of text, so th th this is for your homework when this uh, speech finished. And if you want to do this, uh, we will enjoy to, to know that uh, you are doing this kind of visualization. Of, uh, the, the, the first time you need to, to read this and probably to record this. And then when you record this, uh, this visualization, you put the record on and close your eyes and find all, the, all what the visualization is, is, is talking about. The next, please, uh, Isaac. The last. The last. There is the lower mind. There is a beast that grows through our bad decisions. You have to believe that this is real in order to diminish its power. There is a higher mind that is the seat of life we lived. We managed of service of, of others, our trade um, of inad goodness. Let's visualize it and go towards it. Those are the morals of the story of every myth and specifically of this myth. You want to say something to finish, Isaac? No, we, we agree that uh, we, got, we need to go, to, more, uh, to go more deeply in our, our consciousness if we want to realize our life. This is an important point of view about this myth. You know? If we don't go to our hell, Never we go to the or uh, realization in our life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Enrique and Brother Isaac, for this wonderful, enlightening lecture that has for sure allowed us to see the power of myths when we go deeper into their meaning. Actually, the universality of the myth as the universality of the, the symbol when esoteric aspect can lead us to the discovery of our true self and to get rid of limitations. Uh, before opening the, the mics for questions and comments, uh, I want to make just a couple of reminders as Brother Enrique was sharing with us at the beginning of our session. You are invited to access the Pan American Journal of Theosophy that is available in English and Spanish. And mm -hmm. also one of the books written by Isaac and Enrique has been recently translated to English and it's available in Amazon in the Kindle version that will be free for the first month. Uh, I have put the links in the chat box for your information and we'll put again at the end of the meeting. So uh, after these two reminders, uh, I open the mics, we open the mics for comments, questions, queries. So you kindly feel free, you can raise your hand or you can just write a yeah. question in the chat box. Uh, Brother Arnie? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh so, muchas uh, gracias, uh, Enrique and uh, Isaac. I already Thank read you, your Anthony. first. I read your first issue of uh, Pan American, which came uh, with a beautiful picture of the uh, of uh, Tibet. Tibet, the first issue. Uh, I saw that, yes, but yes. it was it was all in Spanish. My request is also to make in English, Spanish English together. So it will be beautiful. Number yes, one. Yes, we we had a beautiful opportunity to to visit. Uh, different uh, monasteries in Tibet, Tibet three or four years ago. And okay. this is a picture of uh, one of the most important because HPV was there uh, during the visit. And we decided to put this image in the first number of the of this uh, journal. Thank you for-, well, for All the more reason, I think it should be in English for us to enjoy the, the article. If you can, uh, please uh, do that. But my question today is on the ship of Tithius. See, the ship of Tithius is a very famous allegory in, in cognitive science in what is called the fourth dimensionalism. The fourth dimensionalism is the 
uh, you know, it's a, I, I hope you know the story. Uh, what happened, the ship of Theseus was all broken away in parts, and all these parts were kept in different warehouses, and they made new parts. So the question was whether it's a new ship or is it the old ship? Then, so after the discussion, they brought the old parts, put back the, uh, the old parts in the ship and made it the old ship. So the question is, how do you perceive this perception? So it's called fourth dimensionalism. Are you uh, quite aware of that, Allegheny, or the ship of this use? Is this a physical, uh, physical, uh, the fourth dimension? Yes, it's cognitive. So I know it's a cogni cogni uh, human co perception, human cognition, yes. and it's very much close to your allegory of uh, the Minotaur in us, because my, the first book I read, my, my father gifted me, is uh, Jason and the Golden Fleece. Jason and the Golden Fleece, you know the story? Mm -hmm. Yes. Big, uh, uh, so that was the first ever book my father gifted me. I still have it. And it's also a story like this, where Jason is going to conquer all his, uh, uh, his uh, lower uh, 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 what is that? His karma, you know, his karma. He's cleansing his karma through his journey. So if, uh, if you can enlighten me on the ship of this use, it would be wonderful. But I hope you have heard of this concept, the ship of this use. There was a film also on that. Yes, uh, uh, I don't know if we can uh, answer this question correctly, but uh, uh, I think in, in all, all the, the myths, if you have the possibility to, to anthropomorphize uh, this energy and produce images, cognitively speaking, it's more easy for you to, more easy and more tricky, because if you do use images, you still are in the middle of the physical world and the metaphysical world uh, in the met in their true metaphysical world is emptiness so this little by little step by step and our cognitive science uh, at least uh, put one step uh, forward uh, from the physical world which is different than the physical world but also is very contaminated with it but uh, we don't have any other options there are uh, countries like India, which uh, the possibility to do meditation without see, uh, without images is more easy than in the Western world. So it's more easy for India to to put uh, to 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 listen one story and put that story in the in, in the energies without form, and it, it's more useful for even for your inner uh, how awake uh, your inner parts. But in the Western in Western society, Western psychology, we are uh, we are climbing little by little, okay. and and it, I think this is a, a middle middle step. In that middle step, we call that dimensions as a fourth dimension or fourth dimension plus a one energy uh, discover bar. The same how with, with the, the Mount Everest. When the Mount Everest, the, the, the people who lives there uh, during centuries, they say, do you know the Everest? Everest was the car cartographer of the Himalayans. Mm -hmm. So the Everest, what, what mean with Everest? Everest is a mountain, this, that, mountain uh, that mountain is the, the highest mountain in the world, but this mountain is knowledge about human beings and it has a name. Why the Westerns come here and put a new name and put Everest and obligate us to put this. This is the cosification. This is the anthropoformation. This is the, the normal the normal sense of life of the Western society, which is wrong in one sense because it, it, it's supposedly that the rest of the people don't have a, <clears throat> or it's, it's not valid what they mention or the, their languages or whatever. So we are we are touching with this question a very delicate matter about the, the, who is uh, the owner of the knowledge and how it's possible to go beyond that knowledge in the cognitive aspect with involve all the humanity. And we need to use uh, archetypes or, or, or we can need archetypes. to put together uh, <clears throat> according or to, to have uh, some expressions of uh, whatever are according to that and respect respect the, the, the first owners, the first races, the, the first names, the, respect the, all the, the, the things in the nature and stop the nomination of things. Because in the cognitive world, uh, we normally uh, bring our bag full of uh, nominations and put nominations in the first door of the metaphysical world. And I think we commit a terrible mistake. 
I spoke this with the, the scientists of India because sometimes we, <clears throat> we present the papers in the Indian uh, Indian uh, Indian Research Center in Delhi and whatever. I, they have a, a beautiful perspective of this. This is not our perspective, but it, it, this is not exactly to answer your question, but in some sense it's the same. Okay. Isaac, I don't know if you want to say something about it. No, it's, a, it's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Arnie. Thank you, Arnie. Thank you, thank you, Brother Arnie, for your uh, question, your thought-provoking question also. Uh, I, we have also a question related to this universal knowledge that Enrique was talking about. Uh, do you think that there are similar allegorical stories in different world traditions? And if so, would you correlate this one, specifically the Minotaur, with one of the traditions that you know? Yes, it's possible. If you like to, to compare with the uh, Egyptian traditions, uh, the life of uh, Osiris and Isis and Horus, more or less some part of this myth in uh, Egypt have correlation with this uh, myth of Theseus, included the Bhagavad Gita in some moment when the Arjuna received the uh, commitment to go to the another uh, group. You know, in the deeply conception, all are part of us. And we need to resolve this part of our life to confront yeah? the old teachers, the old fr friends, uh, parents. We need to confront this part and to resolve the situation to go more free to our conscienti consciousness, to go uh, to our own uh, objective in the life. Uh, there are many, many contacts. Sometimes these are not clear, but you resolve in this form. HPV say that each meat has seven, uh, seven cases uh, to understand what they explain. And this uh, the sales meat, the sales meat have a three, four, five uh, uh, points that we relate with another meat in, in Egypt and Chaldean uh, conceptions in India or in China. It's, 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 it's not, uh, it's like, uh, you know, the meat is the language of the or, or, or consciousness, or deeply, uh, and uh, our soul, our soul speak to us in symbols and histories, histories on and myths, and if we go to deeply to this conception, we we go not only with the our uh, view in Occident, uh, we view under all the world conceptions. Depend of the, we say uh, this the time of the the kind of meats, but it's more or less. Enrique. Yes, it, it's a. Uh, in some day, some years ago, someone uh, very wise mentioned that at least uh, we all have a myth, because uh, you have a metaphysical part. Even you accept it or not? Yes. You have a physical part, yes. Then you, you live a myth. You live your own myth. And this is part of the, the traditional myths, obviously. And there are similarities between myths, obviously, yes. And in the, the most important similarities because it's, it's speaking about the path, it's speaking about what happened with the hero, what happened with the obstacle, mm -hmm. what happened yes. with the different places in, to live. And for karma or for whatever, we, we normally in each incarnation live uh, different roles. Uh, and after that roles, uh, we are little by little uh, uh, developing our consciousness and taking better decisions and using that knowledge in order to, to have a better path, uh, in order to serve people, to embrace service, embrace uh, love and kindness, embrace uh, the correct use of knowledge and the consider the other's necessities uh, as more important than ours. 
And all of this is not easy. And the meets are one of the tools to, to, to find the correct way to threat of Adriana threat. That's what I think it's what I can say about it. Thank you, thank you. There is also a question here in the chat from Jose Luis. Uh, he's asking uh, the TS needs to face his mi minotaur. How cool he be? <laughs> Very provoking question. <laughs> this is for you Isaac. Want to say something, Enrique. First, first. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest first. <laughs> yes, oh, first one's with 75. Uh, you start. <laughs> uh, yes, we have our, our, our minotaur. The TS have his own, own minotaur to, co to, uh, to compose of all the members and the past uh, experience of the TS in this time. Uh, 145 years, I suppose, more or less uh, old. Uh, the the TS have the, his own shadow. This is impossible to say no. It this shadow uh, produced many experience in, dif in different times in the in DTS. Uh, when they start TS with HPV, you know, the shadows there are very strong. After, with, H, uh, with Annie Besson and Let Peter, and at last, the following uh, presidents give something, the light, more light sometimes, less shadow or more shadow, etc. Yes, we are have. We have our own minotaur, and we need to go there to resolve the problem that the society has. We don't reduce this only for a, a simple solution. The minotaur uh, covers many areas you know, in the life of the TS, and it, we need work in these different areas, in special uh, to re uh, rebuild the ethics principles on our members, or our life, each of us. Uh, there are many ideas about this point. Enrique, or there are. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's a, well, we all have our minotaur. Some, in, in some incarnations is sleeping. And we discover when we, uh, when we take a position of power, uh, then it's possible that our minotaur awake and we destroy everything. And the Theosophical Society is not exception of this because we have humans, humans uh, directing or, or speaking or whatever. Uh, but also the Theosophical Society is the hospital for, for fix these problems because in the theosophical knowledge, we have the antidotes to control uh, these problems of the personality, the human personality. There's a beautiful story about uh, San Francisco. Um, uh, some of the, the, the people who, who, is, who stay in that order, in the Christian order, is, uh, they say uh, there's, there's a difference. Uh, there's not the same to give up wealth, the really wealth, than to renounce to giving up the possibility to have wealth. San Francisco uh, give up his really richness. And one of the monks uh, give up the possibility to have richness. But it's very different. When you have richness, you have power. And you can give up that power but if you don't have reached in it, you are only uh, rejecting the possibility. So it's a, a mental trick, but what happened with one person in the Theosophical Society with uh, some uh, uh, possibility to, to command or power, if that person don't know himself, inside how is uh, his personality, his karma, his minotaur. Uh, 
theosophical society have the possibility to show uh, those aspects. So it's, it's interesting and important. This question, I think, is from a fish, fish from Bolivia, the, the question. But it is normal that we can find. Uh, the problem is how to face it, how to face and support and help people who is lost in the labyrinth doing problematic things to offer him or her uh, possibilities to recover the, the sense, the, the normal sense, in order to use the power correctly uh, for convenience of the Theosophical Society, for convenience for the fraternity, for convenience of the values uh, implies in, in, the, in the Theosophical Society. It's, I think it's, it's a complicated question, but I hope uh, we can uh, explain a little, Jose Luis. Yeah, what you want to know. I, 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 I'd like to put more, some words more. Uh, HPV and the treat uh, in the anthropogenesis about the uh, five or six stanzas. Ex he explained about the dark side of the the dark and the light side. You know, we are the produce uh, about the second logos, uh, light uh, and dark. And the third is the, the mind. We never say no to the dark side. HPV insists the dark side permit to the man the evolution to the light. If we don't go deeply in the dark side, never we go to the uh, light, to the develop, to the realizations. We need the, um, uh, both aspects, but we need to equilibrium this aspect, light and shadow. Uh, if we understand this, we need to go not to only to the light. We need to, to accept that the shadow is necessary in our life. Our mind only understand about this kind of polarities. If we don't have uh, both polarities, we don't understand the world and this level, uh, personality level. For this reason, if we confront the minotaur of the TS, we need to go to the, to produce some equilibrium in the TS. And don't, not only to uh, give uh, lecture and to show uh, uh, apparently to are in the light, what really in the deeply part of us, we are more in the dark side. Uh, it, it's, how say it is, uh, uh, Enrique, it's not easy to explain, but we need to, to go more deeply in this conception and we resolve the problem, not only our, our problem, of the problem of the TS, if we say to find new ways to resolve these uh, obstacles that we have uh, in this new, uh, new uh, world that is not easy to confront. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And now I call the last question of today by Brother Sergio. Uh, he asks if uh, there is any Mesoamerican or pre-Columbian myth that could be a related reference with this concept of the Minotaur myth. There are many, there are many books about the South American myths, many, many. One of Bolivian myths, Jose Luis is from Bolivia. I, I don't know, Sergio, yeah. where it comes from. But the, one of the, my favorite is the, the Galope Caca, the condor of Galope Caca. is in the, the, the Titicaca Lake. And this condor uh, took the, the girls who lost virginity. This is the myth. And then if the girls... Uh, uh, were very afraid of the of the condor. The condor is the big the big bird, the big bird of the 
Uh, well, this is one of the favorites, but there, there are many about the, the Incas, also in the Mesoamerican myths also. Yeah. But it's important to do some differentiation of what is legend and what is myth. In the myth, uh, as we explained before, is, uh, normally there are uh, activity of the metaphysical world. In the legend, no, the legend is only a story, an interesting story, uh, what happened in the physical plane mostly. Um, that's why is uh, but, but there are many, 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 many uh, legends and, and myths, and, and, the, and those those are very beautiful. Many of those are very beautiful. The Mayans, the Mayas, uh, there are a lot of Mayans as the uh, myths also as well. I don't know, Sergio, where are you come from? What? Okay. Thank you, Brother Enrique. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, we were very pleased. Uh, with this, uh, uh, I think we are already uh, running short of time, but uh, with this last question, we come to the end of today's session. And so on behalf of uh, Pragya CS Studio, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to brothers, uh, brother Isaac and brother Enrique, who took time from their busy schedule to share their thoughts on this engaging and inspiring and very, very important subject, which is a study of symbolism and allegories and myths. And I think the, the importance of it can be understood that HPB has dedicated one full section in both of the volumes. The second volume of the secret doctrine is full of study of symbolisms and allegories. And I think that is one of the ways to remove the superstitions from the that has crept in the religions and not taking the literal meaning of the text, but trying to find out the hidden meaning. And when we do that, I think we can understand also the similarities in all the religions of the world. And instead of finding it different, we understand that everything is saying the same thing. So thank you once again for enlightening all of us with this uh, subject, how to dispel the Minotaur uh, from the personal labyrinth. I think we all have to face our Minotaur and have to expel it just like J. Krishnamurti says, just by observing choiceless awareness, all the unconscious, subconscious things will come out and uh, by choiceless awareness, they uh, are finished. And also uh, a big, big thanks to all our participants from all around the world who made, and from India, who made this session very vital and interactive with their questions and very interesting uh, queries and inputs. If you want to watch this talk again or other th talks on the theosophical subjects, you may kindly visit the YouTube channel Pragya CS Studio. And if you like it, feel free to share and subscribe. And now for the closing of this memorable evening, as we all know the ongoing situation of the pandemic, I invite you all to close your eyes and make a will prayer using all your willpower and emotion and feelings for the welfare of all the beings all around this planet. Om. May all be prosperous and happy. May all be free from illness. May all see that is auspicious and spiritually uplifting. May no one suffer. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. Thank you once again, everyone. Have a
happy weekend and now if anybody wants to say their greetings and wishes to brother Isaac and brother Henry please you may unmute yourself and do it and then we will end the meeting in a couple of minutes thank you thank you Brian. thank you so much thank you gracias, gracias, Isaac and, uh, gracias a ti, Lois. thank you very much thank you to, to all of them Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique and Isaac. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique and Isaac. It was a wonderful Thank presentation. Thank you, Enrique Thank you. Isaac. Felicidades. Thank you, Maria. Gracias, Maria. Right. Maria is the translator of the Theosophical Society, well, the, the, the journal, the Pan American Journal. Mm -hmm. Adios, uh, adios, amigos, uh, Enrique. Uh, adios, Arne. Thank you. Bye -bye. Gracias, Catalina. Gracias, gracias a ustedes. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Marcia Canto, Enrique. A ver, voy a hablar con él. Para mí, lo, para mí lo natural sería que las carretillas traigan... Bueno. Estamos oyendo al radio. Gracias, Enrique. Well, Gracias. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Gracias. Thank you for the invitation. Gracias, Enrique. Gracias, Gracias. Buen día. For the invitation, yes. Mm -hmm.